Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this, where if I move this spline up and down, it extends this, this wall here, these pillars, all the way up and down just parametrically. So the first thing we're going to do is we get this model, and this model is from Arch Models 79, and it's one of these 121. Now, this model is then broken down, split into parts, and then we build this rain cloud object. We're going to use this example and we're also going to use another example here, which is slightly different using this model, but the same techniques of breaking it down into pieces and then creating that along this spline. So let's jump straight into it. So the first thing is you can grab a model like this from Arch Models or anywhere you find. And what you need to do is split this model up, which I've done here. So what you need is the pillar is obviously going to be replicated. Same with these sections here. So if I go into element, you can see this section is going to be duplicated over and over and over. Same with the pillar and same with the capping on top. And that's really all you need. So once you have you separated all these pieces here. So with that said, let's hide this model, jump over here, go to our rail clone, and let's begin this process of creating this parametric model. So I'm going to click and drag this out right click and let's go into modify. So in your rollouts, the first thing you want to do is go into open style editor. Once you have this selected, you to get this window and I'll just minimize some things to make this a bit easier. Let's get rid of the layers and move over here so we can see a bit better. So the very first thing you need to do is since this is a single line we're using, we can use a linear 1S array. Click this in here. We're going to be using tree segments so if we want we'll drag on tree segments but for the moment i'll just do one and we're going to choose our main pillar now this is going to be put along this line every two meters to three meters whichever distance you want but for argument's sake what i would do since these are actually modeled in real life they actually have a set scale in most times so if i bring back that model and i bring back this i know after measuring it beforehand that the gap between this pillar center point, the center of this pillar to the center here is two meters. So when we go back to our rain cloud object, we have our segment. I've named it evenly, and that's because it's going to go into the evenly segment here. So back to this linear essay, I'm going to go to the evenly. I'm going to put this into evenly. Now, once I put that in, you'll see nothing happens because what I need to do is I need to grab a spline to tell it which way to go pick the spline and it's still nothing will happen until I plug this into the spline here. So now what you'll see is you'll see this pop up every so often, but what defines that distance? So the linear 1S does. So click in here, go into its rules. And what you want to do is go into this evenly section. So if I start increasing and decreasing this, you'll see they get closer and further apart. Now, like I said, I know this is two meters apart. So once I click two, I get them every two meters. Now, one thing you need to do as well is we need one in every corner and we also need to put one at the start and end. So this evenly is also going to go into the start. It's going to go into the end. You see it popping there. And then now we're going to pop it into the corner. Now, one issue you're going to find when you hit into the corner is this kind of odd shape here. It's kind of trying to fight this corner. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into your evenly segment go into the form and let's uncheck bend and then we'll get that. Now, another thing is it's kind of trying to follow the path both ways. It's, it's struggling. So in this case, what we need to do is go back to our linear 1S and make sure this is set to not align the path and that's how it's done. And that's how it would be built. You would have 90 degree increments. You wouldn't have that at like 45 or so on. And just like that, we have our pillars set up. So let's move on to adding in the middle section. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add in these middle pillars. So this section here. So again, we're going to grab onto a segment. We're going to click here and click this segment. And then I'm going to plug this into our default. So once that's plugged in, that's going to populate that middle section. And just like that, we're almost done. The one issue you need to find is these need to have a particular pivot. So if I go to this one and hit front view, you'll see that this stops. If I go into element here, it stops here. It doesn't stop at the very bottom. That's where this capping comes in. But if we go to our wall here, you can see this is at the very bottom. So we need to tell this object to use its pivot in the rail clone object. So click here, go inside this, select our post, and in the alignment, we want to change the Z to P. 
pivot. And then you can see this is popped up into the exact location we want. And just like that, it's popping in perfectly and aligning amazingly. So now all we have to do is add the capping onto it. So when we're adding the capping, what we need to do is we need to grab another linear 1S, click this, we're going to go to another segment, add in our top capping, and then put this into our default. Now you'll see nothing because we need to add in the same spline that we used, not a different one, the exact same. And now you'll see that it's popped in perfectly and we have our walls. Now there's one thing you need to be aware of, which is if I was to delete the spline for the top one, you'll see this capping goes all the way to the edge. Now if I pop this back in, you'll see it's protruding out the end here. So now we need to stop that. So an easy way, an easy fix to do it is if you go into its limits, I'm going to go to its padding start and end, and I'm going to put in something like 0.2, and then that will start inside here. And then again, I can do at the very end, you see it's protruding out as well. I can do 0.2 as well. And now they'll no longer pop into the end. But just like that, simple enough spline, we can go into our spline here. Let's see if I can select it. Hit one to go to vertex mode, and we can start moving this up and down. And just like that, we have a parametric model that just updates as we fly. And we can create even more splines and create this somewhere else. And it works just like that. Now, one more example is what I'm going to show just now. I'm going to now use this one and show you how to do this because it's going to be slightly different to the way we did it. So you have two different ways of creating parametric models like this. So now I'm going to show you how to create this one. And the reason I have this one as a second example is because I want to be able to show you how to create it so that you can change the distances between these pillars and the main pillars here. So you have two different pillars. So let me show you what I mean by that. So first of all, just start out as we did the other one, create a rail clone object, go to modify, go to our editor here. And what I want to do is I want to grab this sub evenly. So in items, you can go over to macros in transform. I'm going to grab this sub evenly and pop it out. And just like the other time, I'm going to grab my single linear. I'm going to grab a segment and a spline. So our spline again is this, plug it into our spline. Then our default here, is our segment is going to be our main post. We're going to click this. We're then going to grab our post main and we're going to plug this into our evenly here. And I know the distance again in this evenly, if I go linear array, go to rules and change this to two meters. I also want to uncheck this for later, align to path. We don't want that. And as you can see, we have one every two meters. Same as what we did before, where we would put this into the start. So we have one at the beginning and and also the corner and just like that. But the problem is we're going to have a bit of a odd thing here again, because we need to go into our post main to form and I don't want it to bend. And then we have a full segment. Now let's jump into sub evenly. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab a segment here. I'm going to select my second post, which is here. And again, this one has a pivot at the bottom again, because that's where the pivot should be at the very bottom. Going back into my very clone object, Go to hide the layer so you can see a bit better. So in here, I'm going to put my secondary post into my sub evenly, because that's the one going subdivide evenly in between those. Then the post main goes into post. And in here, we're just going to put in a null, which is just a segment, but it's really just empty value. So then once we have that set up, we have an input here, which I'll change in one second, but this is going to go into our default, not our evenly, but our default. Click that in there and you'll see nothing happens because I need to change this. And I know that the gap between, if I go to the front view, I know the gap between the center of this to the center of this, not the gap here, because we're going to be aligning it to its center. So the center of this pillar to that center is going to be 0.2. So click that in. And then just like that, we have these pillars. Now we have one little issue or maybe one or two issues. We have these clipping each other and we need to be able to fix that. Okay, so the first thing we need to fix is this starting at the bottom again, which is just like the other time where we change it to pivot. So in post secondary, we're gonna change the Z, the up and down to pivot. And that's gonna push it right up. And then I wanna to go to post main and I wanna change X to center. 
and then that will start it just there and then the next thing I want to do is I want to go to my linear 1s and you can see here at this edge it's clipping in and creating some odd results so I want to make sure that bevel mode is set to none and then we'll get that perfect alignment and then we're pretty much there now I'm going to put the capping on and then I'm going to show you what the difference between this one and the other one was so again we're going to select linear 1s we're going to put the same spline into here we're going to grab in our default i'll drag this out generators sorry objects segment and in this segment we're going to check our capping and just like that we have our capping now we don't need to worry too much about the end here because it will not go all the way through so just like that what is the difference though between the other one so the big difference for this one is I can go into this sub evenly and I can say, oh, I want the gap actually to be 0.4. And just like that, we have a bigger gap. Obviously, you wouldn't have gaps that big, but you can go something like 0.25. And just like that, we have a completely different model. And we could still go into our linear 1S here and change the distance here, say, to 1 meter. And then we have those gaps there. And just like that, we can extend this, make it bigger, and we can make multiple changes. Now, one thing is when you might get this to someone else is you might want to allow people to make changes without having to come in here and they can make changes into this parameter section. But at the moment, it's blank. So you need to expose some parameters. So how do we do that? So let's expand this. And the thing we want to be able to change is we want to be able to allow people to change this. So right click export parameters and we're going to say the railing spacing click ok and we'll have this bottom piece so click and drag this out we go parameters numeric and we're going to change this to scene units we can put in a limit say but at the moment i won't and that's done you might see in our scene it completely disappears but that's because you can see over here we now have railing spacing and i know that was 0.2 so we can put that back in and it didn't do anything so let me do point 0.2 again and there we go it's back in but now we also want to change the spacing in the overall look so go back up here and in the linear right click ex uh, export parameter and we're going to go to evenly and the evenly distance click ok and we're going to do the exact same thing drag this out do numeric we're going to go to scene units and we have that done we can x this now now we have evenly distance and we're going to tell it two meters and we can change that so now someone can come in here and change it just here instead of having to go into the style itself and changing it and yeah that's pretty much it how we can create parametric models from this model breaking it up into smaller pieces and then just like that we have this great scene where we can just use this all over our set and it'd be very resourceful too. You won't have to take up too much space in your scene. And yeah, and I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.